Now, Ms. Bowler, uh, your parents have been divorced, is that correct? When did that occur? I believe uh, the end of March, April 2008. Okay. And during their marriage, where did they reside at? Um, in Everest, rural Everest. And did they have a business there? Yes, a sawmill. Would that be the Kimmy Sawmill? Yes. And did any of your siblings work there? They did. They all did. Your father ran that? Yes. And your brothers worked there? Yes. And did that at some point end? It did uh, when the divorce proceedings started. Um, he started an affair with another woman, a married woman. And um, after everything that Eugene put her through for all those years of their marriage, it was not. My youngest memories, it was not ever a happy marriage. But she stuck with it, and uh, they, the cheating was the final straw, and they all walked away from the business and him. And when did that occur, approximately? Um, I found out about the affair, I, I believe it was July 2006, and then I think that she filed the following month for divorce. And did the family then become estranged from Mr. Kimmy? Well, for myself, I think it, we were already partly estranged, but definitely then for everyone. From the summer of 2006 up until the present time, has there been significant contact between you and your siblings with your father? No. The, the kids basically uh, sided with the mother in the divorce. Right. And he just caused so many problems and so much heartache that, you know, there, there was just a point where I said, I am not, uh, we lived the way we did growing up, but I was not going to allow that in, for my children to see that. And we just wanted peace. And I, I remember telling my mom when the divorce was final, look, it's just done. If he'll just leave us alone, just forget we exist and be done. Was it a difficult divorce? Yes. Um, I think he thought he could offer her a little bit of money for her, at that point, 36 years of putting up with him. And I mean, she, she provided the only normalcy in his life because he was so drunk and mean to our family, anyway. Um, and I think he thought she would just walk away. And when she fought for, you know, to have the means to be able to support herself on her own, he did not deal with that well. He, uh, he took a backhoe and dug a trench in the driveway so she couldn't get out. He shut off her utilities. He just did not want her walking away with his money. And in the course of the divorce, she did walk away with some of his money, didn't yes. she? Well, no, there are many. She walked away with her Okay. In the divorce, your mother, your mother received a farm and a substantial amount of money. Is that right? Yes. And if I told you that figure was somewhere around six hundred fifty thousand, would you believe that to be accurate? I do. And in addition to that, uh, was your father required to pay alimony to your mother? Yes. Um, it was due on the first of the month in the amount of uh, two thousand two hundred and fifty dollars for. I believe the first five years and then the uh, remainder of the other five years, I think it went to $1,250 a month. Would it be fair to say Eugene was unhappy about this yes. divorce settlement? Yes. Comment about it frequently? Well, through friends and family, I heard that he did. I have no contact with him, so of course he didn't say that to me directly, but that is my understanding. Now, Ms. Bowler, after your mother uh, finished the divorce, did she then move from away from where your father lived? She did. Uh, she lived for a short time with my brother and sister-in-law um, until she had a she had a prefab home that was moved on to some land that we bought, and then she moved there. And where was that located? Um, 1595 326th Road. And your mother had that home constructed or she placed did. there? Correct. 
And would you tell me uh, where that is in relation to the county lines up there? Um, I'm going to say maybe a half mile into Atchison County. From Brown County? Right. And it's pretty close to Jackson County also, isn't it? You're testing me here. I believe so. Within yeah, a couple of miles? West. Yes. So it's fair to say it's in the far northwest corner of Ashton County. Yes. Now, Reed, I'm going to show you what's been marked as State's Exhibit Number One. Can you identify that? Yes, that's my mom's house. That's a photograph of your mother's house. A photograph home? of my mom's house. Okay. Yes. You didn't take that photo, did you? But does it accurately depict your mother's home that appeared back in November? Yes. Judge, I'd offer State's Exhibit 1. Any objection? No objection. State's was with it. Judge, I'd like to ask if the court will permit us to publish the photographs so that the witness can display them on the screen. <coughs> now, Ms. Bowler, there's a picture of your mother's home on the screen. Um, can you tell me, did anyone else live there with her? Um, Donkey. Okay. She had a dog that lived in the house with her? Yes. And what kind of dog was it? Uh, I, well, she called it a Yorkie. Yorkshire Terrier is a really small dog. Very small dog. Yes. Did she have any other dogs at that time? Yeah, not at that time, yeah. Okay. And where, where did the donkey live? Um, back behind the house in that little shed. Okay. And Ms. Fuller, can you show me where your mother normally parked her vehicle? Sure, if you could just point to the location. Well, her Jeep, she usually pulled in there into the basement, and then the truck where it's parked right there is where she normally parked. Okay. Now, Ms. Bowler, when was the last time you had any contact with your mother? Um, November 5th. 2009. And that was a Friday? Saturday, or Thursday? Correct. And what was the nature of that contact? Um, my uh, sister-in-law's father passed away, and his funeral was that day. she call you on the phone, or did she come by your house? I, I believe she did both. Okay. And was that normal? Yes. she come by quite a bit? Yes. How close did and you live to her house? Um, I would say it's at the most a couple of miles. How frequently do you think you saw your mother? I saw her, I would say, a minimum of three times a week, maybe. Spoke to her on the phone two, three, sometimes up to five times a day. On the... Uh on Saturday morning, November the 7th, 2009, did you talk to your mother that day? No. Did you receive some type of a call concerning your mother that day? Yes. Uh, her her uh, best friend of almost 40 years, Sharon Blakely, she called early that morning. I was uh, getting ready to take my son to a doctor's appointment, and uh, she said, she called and said, your mom was supposed to go to St. Joe with me today, and I was going to have contact with her during the week to confirm that she was going. And she said, I called her last night, and she did not answer. She said, I called her on her cell phone and her house phone, um, left messages, and she said, your mom doesn't ever not call me back when I call her. And so she was concerned about that and wanted me to go check on her. 